The topic of this movement snack is opening the shoulders. And this might be something that's worth inserting in between long stints spent studying or working at a computer, uh, or just spending time in this kind of hunched closed shoulder position that lots of us are in the habit of spending time in. So the first thing we're gonna do is a basic arm circle. The circle will be drawn on the sagittal plane. So you can imagine a wall running alongside parallel to the foot and the hand's gonna be brushing along that wall the entire time without hitting into it or deviating away from it. So we'll start by sending the hand forward and up, back and down. Allow the chest to rotate here, but not the pelvis. The pelvis is locked. The chest can rotate. And you're aiming to stay strictly on this forward backward plane the entire time. So not hitting into the imaginary wall and also not deviating away from the imaginary wall. Notice the palm is changing position as well. So just allow the arm to rotate throughout the circle into whatever position is comfortable at each point. Keep the arm straight. Other way. Aim to make the circle as smooth as possible, not rushing through or tensing up in the more difficult parts of the movement. So most of the, for most of us, the less familiar portion of the movement is the part of the circle that happens behind the body. So here there can be a, tens a tendency to tense up, to hold the breath, or to speed up and to try to skip through that difficult part of the movement. Instead, I would recommend slowing down, aiming to keep the breath smooth and steady the whole time, and encourage those ranges of motion to become more and more familiar through relaxation. Okay, change sides. So, imagine a wall running alongside the foot, hand brushing along that wall. The entire time, allow the chest to rotate, do not allow the pelvis to rotate. And aim for a steady speed throughout the circle. If there's any portion of the circle, any part of the circle where the shoulder tends to click, it's not necessarily a bad thing. But if it's happening every time, what you can try to do is pull the shoulder blade down. You can try to depress the scapula through that portion of the movement and see what effect that has. Other way. Often the clicking is a sign of instability and that depression of the scapula, the pulling down of the shoulder blade down toward the center is enough to connect the shoulder a little bit more to the torso and eliminate that uncomfortable clicking that can sometimes happen. Sometimes cracking, clicking is just a sign of that part of the body starting to open up. You can imagine something would if it had been casted. If a broken arm is in a cast, the first thing that's gonna happen when you take the cast off and start trying to move the arm again is gonna be clicking. So it's frozen parts of the body start to thaw out to defrost. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is an arm figure eight. This is also called the teacup movement. The reason being you're imagining that you're holding a teacup in the palm. You're not holding it, so you're not allowed to grip. It's just sitting on the palm. And as you would with a cup of tea, you're trying to avoid spilling it, right? As you wouldn't with a cup of tea, you're gonna draw a figure eight with that hand at the same time. So the palm stays up, the fingers are spread, and we're taking that hand forward, out to the side, overhead and behind, Keep the palm up, forward again. Notice now I'm internally rotated on the shoulder as I go behind and under the armpit. 
So here, when I go out to the side, I'm externally rotated, rotated in the shoulder, overhead, forward. And because I've kept the palm up, I'm now internally rotated. This. So there's a circle being drawn under the arm, or under the armpit, and then a circle being drawn above the shoulder. And just for today, let's minimize movement in the rest of the body. So we could allow the spine to participate and draw an even larger figure eight, but by minimizing movement in the spine, we maximize movement in the shoulder. And that's what we want for this movement snack. Okay, other way. So back to the side, forward, overhead and behind, and really try to travel behind the line of the body here. Because again, that part of the movement is going to be the most unfamiliar for most of us, travel back. So at every opportunity, you're reaching away. You reach up, reach back, reach to the side, reach forward, reach back to the side to increase the size of the movement to the greatest degree possible. Change sides, forward, so this, this variation is led from the fingertips, traveling forward to the side, behind and overhead, forward again, keep the palm up to the side, behind and under the armpit. Not allowing the spine to participate, to assist, working again with a constraint, that increases the degree of freedom in the unconstrained uh, part of the body, the unconstrained area. As with the circles, be aware of the parts of the movement that are most difficult for you and aim to avoid holding the breath and becoming tense through those portions of the movement. When you reach the hip, we'll change direction. So go back to the side and this variation is led from the shoulder the side, forward, under the armpit, and back. And so instead, breathe through and relax through those uncomfortable, unfamiliar parts of the movement. And this will encourage the shoulders to open up. Really the purpose of this movement snacks is to take the body through less familiar movements, less familiar ranges of motion that we tend not to be traveling into or through in our regular daily lives. And so it's those parts that we want to spend the most time in rather than skipping past them because they're at least to begin with perhaps a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, next we're going to wring the arms out. So reach away. Imagine someone's pulling you away from the fingertips, pulling you away in each direction. And then on one side, we'll fully externally rotate and the other will fully internally rotate. So this is like a wringing out of the arms, like you'd wring water out of a wet towel. One side fully turns out and the other side turns all the way in. Again, spreading the fingers, constantly reaching away. So you get this interesting rotational stretch all the way through the entire chain. From the shoulder to the fingertip. Allow the spine to participate a little bit here to increase the range of motion of the movement. Okay, we're going to finish by emptying the arms of tension. This is a very simple, common movement. We're just rotating at the hips, rotating at the pelvis in a way that causes the arms to swing. And I'm not actively swinging the arm. What I'm hoping for, what I'm aiming for is 
a completely heavy, completely relaxed arm. I like to imagine two heavy ropes hanging from their attachments to the torso. And they're swinging only as a consequence of the rotation of the center, the rotation of the spine. So another image I like is a clothesline that's being spun around at the center. And the clothes on the clothesline spin because of the spinning at the center, but they're not doing anything themselves. And same thing here. I'm not swinging my arms, the arms are being swung. And that allows them to relax and become relieved of tension. Okay, shake the arms out. Observe any differences. Hopefully the shoulders feel a little bit different from when we began. And that's it for today.